Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean from Christians Unite, and this is another edition of Reading Through the Bible. Welcome to this edition of Reading Through the Bible. We are going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 8, and I'm going to be reading out of the Good News for Modern Man edition. Um, I do like to switch sometimes from KJV uh, to this version, um, kind of back and forth. Um, this one, uh, this book here actually is a little bit easier to understand, uh, word wise, but I feel like the transit translation is pretty solid. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read chapter eight for you. And then as always, I'll kind of dissect it for you as well. Hebrews eight, Jesus, our high priest. Here is the whole point of what we are saying. We have such a high priest as this, who sits at the right of the throne of the divine majesty in heaven. He serves as the high priest in the most holy place, that is, in the real tent which was put up by the Lord, not by man. Every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and animal sacrifices to God, and so our high priest must also have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there were, there are priests who offer the gifts according to the Jewish law. The work they do as priests is really only a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven. It is the same as it was with Moses. When we talk, or when he was about to put up the tent, God told him, be sure to make sure everything like the pattern you were shown on the mountain. But, but as it is, Jesus has been given priestly work, which is much greater than theirs. Just as the covenant which is arranged between God and men is a better one, because it's based on promises of better things. If there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, there would have been no need for a second one. But God finds fault with his people when he says, The days are coming, says the Lord. When I draw a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the tribes of Judah, it will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors. On the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, they were not faithful to the covenant I made with them. And so I paid no attention to them, says the Lord. Now this is the covenant that I will draw up with the people of Israel. After the, those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them will teach his fellow citizen, nor will anyone have to tell his fellow countrymen, Know the Lord, for they will all know me. For the least to the greatest of them, I will have mercy on their transgressions, and I will no longer remember their sins. By speaking of a new covenant, God has made the first one old, and anything that is getting old and worn out will soon disappear. So what this is saying is the old covenant that we see all throughout the Old Testament. It was temporary. It was not made to completely cover all sins. It was a temporary solution until Jesus, which was the true sacrifice, came and he became the mediator between us and God and tore the veil. No longer was there a separation where we needed a person to be a high priest to do it for us. We have direct connection to God through Jesus Christ because of what he did on the cross. Thank you for listening to this edition of Reading Through the Bible. We will see you again tomorrow for topics.